Hello, my front porch friend. I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm actually out here at the Mill House getting ready for Easter this weekend where we'll have our family and friends over here for some Easter celebrating, kind of putting together my Easter egg bush tree thing for the table. <laughs> it's a work in progress, believe me. Oh, I haven't been in the mill house for a little while. It's too cold to go outside today, so I thought I'd just come in here and work. I do have a word from the Lord for you, and oh, is it encouraging. I can't wait to share it with you. Before I do, would you just walk around this mill house with me for a minute? I know we've been in here lots of times, but I love being out here with you. This room is really, really special to me. As I've told you many times, my grandfather built this old mill house long before I was born. He actually used it for his grist mill and they ground corn meal from this room. Of course, there was not a kitchen and a living room in it. I kind of changed his plan a little bit. But you know, my grandfather, he built the, the dam out here. Let me show you. This is the neatest little spot for me. I'm just, I know you looked at it. Look at it again with me. He built this dam many, many years ago. And this is where he had his old grist mill out here by his barn. Just a special spot. There's Lily. Hello, Lily. Can you say hello, sweetie? <laughs> Come inside. I don't know if I've shown you this or not before, I can't remember. But my great grandmother, she made this old quilt long before I was born too. It's so special to me because every little stitch in this quilt was made with her hands. And I, I love it because on the back of this quilt, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can still see some of the faint markings of old fertilizer sacks. <laughs> She built the front of it with scraps and the back of it with fertilizer sacks. Do any of you have family memories like that? I bet you do. And uh, do, does anybody remember these pictures out of the 60s? That was my childhood right there, all summed up in a picture. And I grew up with that picture right there above my couch, pretty much my whole growing up life. And do you remember these pictures? Look here. Let me show you, see if, see if any of y'all remember these. Remember that one? I just love those old pictures. I try to collect them a little bit just because they're right out of my childhood. Is that not the sweetest thing? And then look here, little boy leading the cows. And then I just love pictures. There's the barn in the background, Papa's barn. Looky there. Oh, remember it? All right, I guess I've, I've, I've held you back long enough. This is way before my time. Remember that? Anyway, <laughs> come with me. I want to bring you this word. And I'm getting over here to where I wrote down some things this morning as I was praying for you. Oh, I'm telling you, pull up, pull up a stool with me. I've got a stool for you right here because we've got some stuff to talk about. This word that the Lord gave me to encourage you with today I got so ministered to reading this word and hearing it for you. I just thought, Lord, I don't know who this is for exactly, but you talk about a word that's going to encourage your faith. Here's, let me just put it in a, in a one sentence nutshell, and then we're, I'm going to open up the word and read you what, what he gave me. Here's what I heard in a sentence for somebody watching right now. I heard the Lord say, you're going in, but you're coming out. Now, you may not understand that right now, but you will by the time we're finished. You're going in, but you're coming out. Now, he led me first for you to read Psalms 77. And as I began to read this chapter this morning, I knew that it was speaking to somebody that was watching that's on the porch today, really in a place of really just despair. And... And, and pain and question. So listen, would you stay with me long enough for me just to read you several verses here because it's important. I've got to get to this main point. Stay with me all the way to the end today. All right, listen. Psalms, the 77th chapter. Now I'm reading in the New Living Translation. 
bear with me. I've lost my glass chain today. So I'm having to put my glasses on and off. Anyway, Psalms 77. I'm reading, like I said, New Living. Let me get it where you can see it with me. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Have you ever just been praying so much you just shouted? I did it this morning. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with, long, with longing for his help. Some of you have been, been there this week. And in, in this passage of Psalm 77, this, this person, they have prayed literally all night long. I've been there. I've been there. And he says, I still don't feel relief. Look at verse 4. You don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. I've been there too. Or lately, where you just can't even sleep, you've got so much on your mind. You feel like it's even, it's even hard to pray. You're so tired. Now listen to this. I think of all the good old days, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Look at this. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Look at this. Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? Have you ever just had questions like that? Have you just have ever just been like, Lord, have, have your promises failed? I know I heard from you. Lord, have you shut the door in compassion to me? God, are, Lord, are you there? Where are you? This person in Psalm 77 relates to you and me. Watch. And then, after all the questions, after verse 9, has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door in his compassion? Look at verse 10. And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. Verse 11, but then, but then, I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. That right there is the turning point of this chapter. And that right there is the turning point of your day. That right there, my sweet friend, is the turning point in your situation. And it's what's about to happen in your life. What are you saying, Karen? This man and you, you have been listing your questions. Where are you? Have you failed me? Has your word failed? Have you turned your back on me? I can't pray. I've been up all night. Can't sleep. I feel like I'm, I'm in the depths of despair. Where are you, God? And then all of a sudden... But then I start remembering all your wonderful works. And then when he starts remembering, things start changing. Watch. He says here, I start remembering your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Oh, God. I love this because now... After he started remembering what God's done in the past, now he's going to start worshiping him. This is your key. He says, oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Oh, see, I love this. One minute, he's in the depths of despair. He's full of questions, wondering if God has forsaken him. And then he starts remembering. And then he starts worshiping. And when he starts worshiping, <laughs> when you get your eyes off how you feel and you start saying like he did, there's just no God like you. There's no God like you. Oh, it's your strong arm that delivers your people. Ooh. And then he starts remembering that. Starts wor Worship is the key. Now, let me tell you what happens. When he started worshiping, he started hearing from God. 
When the Red Sea saw you, O God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. See, he's worshiping, but he's remembering now the greatness of God. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. That is your word. I know you've been in questions and you've been hurting and you've been wondering, but God is telling you today, you need to start remembering. If you'll get your mind off what you're dealing with right now, stop looking at this in the natural. I'm going to talk from experience from Karen just from this week. Me too. And you start focusing. Oh, I'm just going to start thinking about what you've done. Now I start just worshiping you. Oh, there's no God like you. Then you start saying, God, when the Red Sea saw you with the children of Israel, the Red Sea looked at you and it just started shaking. That Red Sea started quivering. Whoa. And then it just started quaking. Right now, just like the children of Israel with Moses, you're standing before a Red Sea too. What is your Red Sea today? What? Because for children, for the children of Israel and Moses, it was a place of impossibility, just like you. But when that impossibility looked up and saw God coming down for Moses and the children of Israel, he said the sea started shaking and the earth started quaking and they started hearing the rumbles of thunder. They started seeing the lightning of God. And see, today you need to look at your Red Sea and start saying, you know what? When my Red Sea that I'm dealing with right now saw, saw God, it started quaking. When this financial crisis in my life saw God, it started shaking. When this spirit of division that has attacked my family saw you, God, it started trembling. When this old spirit of witchcraft and this spirit of Leviathan that I've been dealing with lately, this spirit of fear, depression, sickness, infirmity, despair, rebellion, perversion in my child. Come on, when the liar that I've been dealing with this week saw my God, it just started trembling. Come on, right now, my circumstances see my God. And when they see my God, it starts shaking. Come on, the enemy starts trembling when it sees somebody starting to worship. Because when the enemy sees you lifting up your eyes and worshiping your God, the enemy sees your God coming down to deliver you, and your enemy starts trembling at the power of your God. And I love this. Because when your God comes, watch, oh, then that Red Sea, watch, your road, I'm going to fix it where you can see it, your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. I know you're facing a Red Sea that's impossible, but God knows the pathway through it. There's a pathway through what you're dealing with right now. You can't see it in the natural. What you going to do? What Moses did? You lift up your eyes and start worshiping. What the psalmist did right here, you start saying, there's no God like you. I know I got a Red Sea in front of me and it's impossible. I know it's a spirit of infirmity or it's a spirit of sickness or financial impossibility or my child, a mess in my house, division in my family. It's impossible to get through. I don't know the way, but I know one thing. When people are looking at me saying, how are you going to get through this? You're going to tell them, I don't know how, but I know him. I don't know how, but I know him. And I know one thing, he's got a way through this thing that no one knows was there. When the children of Israel and Moses stood looking at that Red Sea, they didn't know that when the breath of God began to blow over those waters and the Spirit of the Lord began to move when their eyes got on him, those, the, the breath of God made a pathway no one knew was there. Did you hear me? God's got a way through this. God's got a way through it. I know your doctor don't know how to get through this. He's told you that it's permanent and there's, it's, it's, this is just a chronic situation. They don't have answers anymore. They've done all they can do. Well, the doctor don't know how, but God's got a way through it. Come on, your family don't know the way through it. Your best friend don't know the way through it. God knows the way through it. And it's not that God's going to remove. God didn't remove them from the Red Sea. He just took them through it. You are going in it, honey, but you're coming out. You're going in the Red Sea. You're going into this impossible place that you're in the middle of right now. You're going in it, but you're coming out. I said you're coming out. God says you're coming out. Look at this. The Lord told me to read you this right here. It's The word is through. T-H-R-O-U-G-H. You're coming. You're coming through this thing. Look right here. 
Isaiah 43. The Lord said, read this to you. Isaiah 43. But now, O oh front porch friend, listen to the Lord who created you. O oh front porch friend, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I've ransomed you and called you by name in your mind. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of opposition, you will not be burned up and the flame will not consume you for I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel then the Lord told me to read you this look here Isaiah 44 44 verse 15 I'm sorry, Isaiah 43 Isaiah 43 New Living I am the Lord your Holy One Israel's Creator I'm the Lord who opened a way through through the waters making a dry path through the sea I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they, and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle. Wait, the Lord is going to take care of your enemy. I said the Lord is going to, he's going to bring you through it. But, but in the same time, you may feel like the enemy's chasing you down, but he's going under. You're coming out, he's going under. I want to tell you again, it's your enemy that's going under. And your enemy's not people. Your enemy's not flesh and blood. This spirit that's been attacking your body, your children, your home, your marriage, your finances, that demonic spirit, God's got a day of dealing and reckoning with him. And that day's come, that spirit is going under and you're coming out. Look right here. Oh, come on. I drew the enemy in, but look at verse 18. I did all that. I've opened the sea, defeated the enemy. Look at verse 18, but forget all that. <laughs> forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm about to do for you. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I'm going to make a way through the wilderness. I'm going to make a way through the wilderness. God's telling you, you know what? You can talk about Moses and you can talk about the children of Israel and their Red Sea, but it ain't nothing compared to what I'm about to do for you. He's saying what I did for them, I'm about to do for you. I'm about to do something new in your life. I'm about to do something you've never seen before. I'm going to make a way through this wilderness you're in right now. I'm not, it, it's, it's not that he, he always delivers us out of it. No, he takes us through it. He could have delivered the children of Israel. You know, yes, a different path, taking them around. He could have moved the whole sea. No, he took them through it, through a pathway nobody knew about. He could have delivered the Hebrew boys. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He could have delivered them. He could have delivered them long before they ever got in the fiery furnace. Oh, oh, I just feel that right now. I may have to turn there even though I'm out of time. He could have delivered them before they walked in the fire. He could have delivered them whenever they were on their way walking to the fire. He could have delivered them while they were throwing them in. But no, he didn't deliver them from the fire. He was waiting on them inside the fire. <laughs> Until, whoa, the king looks in the fire, expecting the boys to be consumed. But instead, the king looks in there. And he says right here in Daniel, the third chapter, suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumps up in amazement and says, didn't we cast three men thrown into the furnace? They said, yes, we did. He said, look, because I see four men unbound, walking around, unharmed. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. Oh, honey. It's not that he'll deliver you from it. He's waiting for you in it. And he's going to bring you through it. And let me tell you something. When he brings you through it, you're coming out of this fire, just like he told you in Isaiah 43. You're coming through the water and you're not drowning. You're coming through the fire without the smell of smoke. I said, you're coming out of the fire. Some of you is in water and some of you is in fire. But you're coming out of the fire without a smell of smoke. Come on, it ain't even going to be any residue on you. And you know what's going to happen? If God, if God doesn't deliver you from it, if he takes you through it, you know what the result of that is? You know, because, because it'd be easier in you if you did, she'll just deliver you from it. But when he delivers you in it and through it, it's because of two reasons. It's for your greater good and his greater glory. Because for the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Whenever they were delivered, they came walking out of the fire. You know what happened? When they came out, with, out without the smell of smoke, the king rose up and he said for their entire nation, he said, if anybody even speaks a word against their God, then they'll be destroyed. And then the king said, because there's no other God who can rescue like this. God got greater glory because he delivered them from the fire than he did from delivering them before the fire. He, God got greater glory, but you know what? They got greater good because look at verse 30. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> glory to God. When he delivers you through it, and he's waiting for you in the middle of it. It's because you are going to have a, you're going to see God glorified like he's never been before in your family, in your office, in your church, in your city, and in your world. And you are going to be blessed of God. He's going to exalt this thing. He's going to turn this thing around for you. Oh, sweetheart, you're going in, but you're coming out. You hear that today? Will you comment below right now? And say those words, I'm going in, but I'm coming out. Or you could say, Miss Karen, I'm in it right now, but I'm coming out of it. You may comment below and say right now, I don't know how, but I know him. I don't know how, but I know him. Come on, you may just comment below right now and just say, just say something like, he will receive the greater glory and it will be for my greater good. Come on, and comment below right now what you need. I want to know what you're believing God for so I can pray with you. Sweet Father, I pray in Jesus' name. You're the glorious God that delivered Moses. You're the God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you're the God that's delivering my front porch friend right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name these waters are parting today. Make a way, Father. I thank you that you've made the way no one knows is there. Carry her through it. Carry him through it. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, they're walking out of this fire with their prodigal. They're walking out of this fire with their healing. They're walking out of this fire with the provision in the hand. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that you're turning this around. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, there is no God like you. The psalmist was right. There is no God like you, and you are our God, and we give you all the glory today in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, sweet friend, I want to hear what God is saying to you. I can't wait to read your comments. I love you so much, and I will see you again next week, okay? Until then, be encouraged. I'll see you soon.